Okay, this one is on the basic refrigeration cycle at its simplest. And we're going to start out assuming you already understand about saturated temperatures and pressures and latent heat. Okay, four things make up the mechanical refrigeration system. Compressor, which is the prime mover, it is a uh, compressor. It uh, takes a low pressure gas and turns it into a high pressure gas. Uh, evaporator. Evaporator is the reason we do this. It absorbs the heat from whatever space or substance we're trying to take the heat from. The condenser takes the heat that was absorbed in the evaporator and uh, releases it somewhere where it's not a problem. Splitting the high side and low side is the expansion device. Now I said high side and low side because the compressor is high pressure here because my refrigerant is moving along this way goes down to here and it hits this expansion device and the expansion device is, is very important uh, it can be very simple, it can be very complex depending on uh, what type is used this separates the high side from the low side now you've actually got two things that separate high side and low side one's a compressor and one's expansion device so when the refrigerant moves down through the condenser, becomes a liquid, and hits that expansion device, it can't just pass through. If it could just pass through, all it would do is simply pump the refrigerant around. It would not change its pressures to any appreciable degree. So, let's follow this refrigerant as it comes out of the compressor. Okay, now it's a high pressure gas. We call it highly superheated hot gas. It passes out of the compressor, goes to the condenser. The top part of the condenser takes that high superheat off and drops its temperature. When it reaches uh, the uh, past the first couple of uh, runs in the condenser, it begins condensing. Now at that point, of course, it doesn't change its temperature. The temperature stays the same, but the refrigerant is turning from a gas into a liquid all down through this thing. So it's releasing latent heat. When it gets to the bottom of the condenser, the bottom pass or two, it's all liquid. Now when it becomes all liquid, remember up here we were a saturated mix. And so there was gas and liquid refrigerant and it was condensing so it's going to condense at the same temperature down here it's all liquid and so it will subcool that means it's going to get cooler than the condensing temperature so it passes through the liquid line hits the expansion device and then the expansion device, because it's a limiting device, it, it could be just a small hole. The pressure on this side is going to be much higher than the pressure on this side. So the refrigerant passes through here. Its pressure drops from the condensing pressure temperature to the evaporating pressure temperature. As the refrigerant passes through the evaporator, again, we're a saturated mix. We're half liquid, well, part liquid and part gas. And so it is evaporating at a specific temperature. Once it gets to the end of the evaporator, it's going to be all gas. And that is the suction line coming up to the compressor. This will be, uh, this should be all gas coming into the compressor because the compressor is a, is a uh, compressor that compresses gas. Uh, it can't compress liquids. So we want a gas in the compressor. And then it just goes through the cycle again. 
high temperature releasing high temperature and pressure releasing the heat uh, through the expansion device to the evaporator low pressure absorbing heat going back to the compressor and doing it all over again there are a number of other parts to the refrigeration system but these are the only four that you must have to make it work and that's the beginning of uh, talk about the refrigeration cycle